Okay. Hello. Uh, this is my take on Berlin School electronic music. Uh, Berlin School is a broad genre uh, that's more about mood and feel rather than specific instrumentation, uh, but it lends itself well to electronic instruments. To that end, uh, today we're going to look at how to make two key sonic textures for Berlin School music. Uh, we're going to look at slowly modulating plucks and uh, slow leads that sweep up and swell. Uh, with these two sounds, you can do uh, what you just heard. You can do a lot of the groundwork for Berlin school style, spacey, you know, cosmic music. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So once you've got those basics, you know, you can layer on whatever else you like and see what fits your own music, you know? So there's a basic recipe, Berlin school textures. Uh, the ingredients are, you need some plucks, right? We'll talk about how to make those real easy. Um, and ideally you want things that are slowly modulating their timbre and, uh, tempo synced delays usually, and big, big reverbs. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, but that's what we're doing today. So if you like that sound earlier, we'll show you how to do it. Uh, and then you build your pluck out and then to get this texture, you basically make some repeating figures. It's not like making a long drawn out melody. Berlin school textures are small, very short clips generally. Uh, repeating over and over again with a good delay and some reverb behind it. And you get this sort of washing texture that you heard earlier. You want a lead that swells underneath it. It's all about sort of timbre modulation, right? And making interesting th things happening for your ears, even though the individual pieces are relatively simple. And, uh, and then you just play and have fun. So let's get started. All right, I'm going to do this in C minor. Okay. And let's see. Let's work backwards, actually. So if we take this pluck, all right, and we work backwards. If we take away the long, uh, you know, uh, black hole style, amb you know, uh, ambient black hole reverb, right, and we're just left with. You know, just a plain pluck. There's some reverb going on there that's room ambience. But if we take that away, all right, that's just a synth pluck, a little analog, a couple saw waves. Um, they're very, very slightly detuned from each other, so you hear some phasing there. And if we take that away, all you really have. That's just a saw wave pluck. One oscillator, real simple. So how do you make that? Well, uh, in Ableton, right, you can just pull up an analog. I'll drop one in. You're going to get your basic saw wave. Right? First thing, drop the filter. Can't really hear it based on the envelope, so we're going to bump the envelope up a bit. So now... Right? That's this parameter here. It's how much does the envelope here affect the filter frequency. So we're going to bump it up a bit. And we're going to drop our sustain all the way down. And then play with how short uh, this decay is. About a second. One and a third seconds. All right, fair enough. Give it a little bit of resonance. All right. That's the pluck. Same as the other one. Now we've got two oscillators running here. What we're gonna do is detune one of them very slightly. This one's at zero. We're gonna make this one Point one. Zero point one. That's almost too much. Let's go with zero point zero three. So tiny, tiny amount of detune. There we go. It's basically phasing. You're getting almost like a comb filter effect. All right. 
So now compare that against our first one. Pretty close. Good enough. Then what we want to do is we want to add a little room ambience on that, okay? Now what I did, what I did here was I just added a plain old reverb. All right, it's got about a second's worth of decay time. It's really kind of on the wet side, 63% what that does is it makes it seem like it's in the distance a little bit. All right. That's good. And then finally, what we end up adding is a delay. So I'm using uh, the echo delay from Ableton, just stock plugins. And what we turn when we turn that on, what you're hearing is, uh, that's a ping pong delay. So each echo is bouncing left and right. We're at 50% wet, dry, about equal. So feedback's around 50%. And then there's a filter being applied to the, reverb, uh, to the echoes where we're pulling out the low and high end. So as it continues, as it feeds back and you start hearing the echoes, um, it's pulling the low and high end out of that, so it's giving them that sort of old-timey radio feel, and it's also effectively like pushing them out into the distance. And our delay time is set up to be a dotted eighth note, because we're playing eighth notes. So what you get is each note comes not, if you're gonna be playing a series of eighth notes, the echoes are going to fall on the and in between them, and it gives you this ducka 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 sort of spacey feel. Additionally, there's a built-in reverb on this particular unit, as well as the one we've got in, in line, uh, and this is being applied to the echoes, so it's up around 60%, 60% decay, right? And I've dialed the stereo-ness actually in a little bit. Normally it's at 100%. You hear the difference? You know, make it extreme. Right, the echoes are really pushed left and right, and that's actually too far. I want them in a little bit to sort of be a stereo smear. I'm looking for like a cloud-like feel. All right, and so then what we do in our sequence is we just play eighth notes. So. That's a very simple figure. That's just um, C, G, C, and it's just repeating. That alone you can play with for hours. You could totally lose yourself. Um, and so what I've done here is I've set up a series of clips with slight variations on just eighth note patterns. And I've got them chained together so we can just play them. So what do we want to do for this lead? Okay, so we want to play this lead over it. Let's take the lead apart. All right, this lead sound. So if we take away all the delay and reverb here, what we're looking at is again, a basic analog oscillator. So it's very similar to the pluck, except it, you, you can sustain it. So we've got a, saw, um, a sawtooth wave, okay? Um, it's actually up an octave. We've got 
glide on and it's set to be monophonic and we've got a legato glide at 61%. So if we play distinct notes, they are simply played. But if we play them legato, meaning we sort of hold uh, while one note's playing, um, while we play them legato, meaning while one note is being held, you start playing the other one without lifting up on the first note. You can dial in how fast that slide is here, right? So we've got a mono sawtooth legato. Um, and there's a filter being applied, frequencies all the way down, a little bit of resonance. And then the envelope for the filter has this big, long attack. So if we get rid of the attack, it's like, there it is. If we make it a slightly longer attack, you get that blah, blah sort of, you know, synth brass sound. But if we set it out to be about... I don't know, 700 milliseconds. We get this nice swell in there. It doesn't sound like much dry like this, right? But it is a really nice timbre change. That sweeping filter opening up is great. So then when we take that and we turn on a little delay, oh, actually before, <laughs> before that, I'm going to layer in the other oscillator. So we turn on the second oscillator. It's actually at its normal octave. And I've actually got the sub oscillator on about 43%. Right? Additionally, the LFO is very slightly modulating the filter frequency. You hear how it's breathing? That's the LFO slowly, very, very slowly opening the filter in just a tiny bit. Um, if I look at the filter here, our LFO is barely opening and closing it. Okay. And then once we do that, we turn a little delay on. We've got a plain old, nothing fancy, just a plain old quarter note delay. It's not filtering or anything. The feedback's up kind of high. It's about 30% wet. And that gives us a nice little almost a chorusing effect. Which is really nice with the, uh, when it does that, the uh, legato sort of glide. And then finally, what we do is we turn on, now I'm using the Valhalla DSP here. Super massive, it's free. You get it from Valhalla DSP. Um, but you can use anything. These huge, huge spacey delays are very, very, um, uh, delay reverbs are really in vogue right now, right? So Valhalla, super popular. Native Instruments makes Realm, which is, I think, 50 bucks US. Uh, there's, there are others. There's tons of them. Um, just go find one. This one's free. Uh, put it on. I'm using a preset out of it called Cygnus X1, which is the first black hole that was ever discovered that everyone kind of agreed was a black hole. Um, and we can go down the rabbit hole of Cygnus X1, we get into Rush, and then uh, Rosinantes, which is the spaceship from the song mentioned by Rush, and then Rosinantes is actually also the name of the spaceship from the uh, sci-fi series, uh, what is it, The Expanse, um, and Rosinantes is the name of the ship in that, which is also the name of uh, Don Quixote's horse. But that's an internet rabbit hole. So <laughs> anyway, so we've got a Valhalla DSP on here, and it's dialed in to be huge. I'm gonna go get a cup of tea while that dies out. Right, nice and long. That rising and falling filter uh, frequency that the LFS driving is just making just the greatest swells out of that reverb. 
So if you take these two sounds, you take our pluck, and you take our sweepy lead, you can do some basic Berlin school beds. So that's the idea behind it. You should be able to just bang this out. It doesn't matter what kind of synth you use for this. You use hardware, software, doesn't matter. It's very basic sounds, just some sawtooths that have been filtered either into a pluck or into a, a lead that's got this big opening slow sweep. Um, you can apply, you can layer some of the oscillators together to make them thicker for the lead. Uh, you could detune them ever so slightly to give you a sort of a phasing feel and then use an LFO to slowly modulate the filter frequency just a little bit, just give it a little wiggle uh, and then layer on a little delay, maybe um, basic room reverb to give it a little distance from the listener and then a big, big old uh, like a uh, super massive black hole delay to give you that big mm, spaceness of it. Uh, and that's it. And then put on whatever layers you want. Anyway, there we have it. A Berlin style pluck and a slow sweepy lead. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to talk about how to build clips that take advantage of these sounds and build progressions and melodies uh, that contribute to our Berlin school creations. Right? Uh, but thank you for your time. And uh, if you want more, please uh, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you found it fun and useful. Uh, doing so uh, gives me good feedback. Uh, as well as comments are always useful feedback and um, motivates me to make more videos. So thanks again. And you have been watching Synth Seeker. Have a great week. Stop, stop.